Was IQ Basic Training, Lesson 226, the pencil or freehand drawing tool. This is, truthfully, I use this one the most, my pencil tool. First thing I do when I come into a classroom, because it always defaults to some light color, I come down here, use, using the pencil tool almost all the time to draw attention. Notice that I can't draw to the very edge here. If I went to a clean whiteboard, I can draw right to the edge. Okay, but that other one was a PDF document, and so um, we didn't have access to the entire whiteboard space. But if I, when I first get started, I, first thing I always do is grab a nice dark color, and I like red, and I like these are kind of, let's make this bigger. Remember, we can make these bigger. Almost anything we can resize in the classroom. I like something a little bit larger, so I usually try to bring it up to a, a size 3. Sometimes it's hard to get there, so I can just go in here and change the size. And now I've got the size that I usually like to draw attention. I use this for highlighting. I use it for um, circling, uh, bringing attention to. Uh, I just use, I just love using the freehand tool. Now it gets a bit messy, but remember, we have the ability to remove things and then start again with some clean lines. Be a little bit more careful. We could probably even make it bigger if it's we want to draw attention to stuff. Uh, I just can't say enough about the freehand tool. It works on every single. Um, type of file you bring in. It work. Matter of fact, all these drawing tools do. So that's always nice. It, there's no difference in your experience of what it's going to do. When I go off the edge, you guys don't go off the edge trying to follow me. But, what else can I say? There's only, there's not too much you can get wrong with that. Um, remember too, you guys should be, you guys can't see on my screen because I'm the one that's doing the drawing. But, when we have several students drawing at the same time, we can see who's doing what. I love to give, at the very least, drawing control, uh, which is the, gives them everything, unfortunately, to the students. Many students are visual learners. Most of them have been brainwashed into accepting just sitting back and passively looking, but still there are many students that are visual and need to be participating in the activity. The first time you give a student stuff, oh, he's going to be drawing stuff and playing with stuff all over your screen. But pretty quickly, you can redirect them to be a support function so that when you're talking about something, they might even bring in highlights for you. They might even do pictures for you to help you um, illustrate your point. They are being engaged. They're be your other students are actually being reinforced with information rather than um, being distracted by someone writing something over in the chat box. So uh, I cannot encourage you enough to allow this, your, your participants to get involved. Now certainly some are going to go overboard. You have to restrict it a little bit. One of the biggest problems is that when you give controls to other people, and let's say we're on a, um, a regular um, whiteboard activity, uh, when they want to work in different areas, they will change their screen, and they don't realize that it changes everyone's. So you might be focusing on something up here, talking to the students, but then if they, if another student, you've given them writing control, they might be moving over or elsewhere in the drawing to add some other things, thinking that they're going to be helping you when in fact they're distracting because everybody's whiteboards are tied together when you are the, um, when you have writing control. Now individually they can move around and look at things and look at your answer sheet down lower if it's down here. So that's why we showed you how to cover up the answers. But, um, uh, well, I think I've said enough. <laughs> we'll see you next lesson. Bye-bye.